Okay, in today's lecture, we're going to cover the first part of the section 6.2 material on uh, properties of power series. Uh, so all of this chapter six material is on power series. And in the last section 6.1, uh, we dealt primarily with uh, determining the interval and radius of convergence of a given power series. Um, and we saw that those problems could be a bit tedious. So it starts to beg the question, well, uh, what is the purpose of a power series? And in the next two sections, we're going to uh, start seeing some applications. <clears throat> so uh, one big application of uh, power series is that we can represent functions uh, or certain types of functions in terms of power series uh, and then perform operations on those functions like uh, differentiating them, uh, integrating these functions, if we had uh, a function that was particularly messy uh, to differentiate or integrate, we could uh, express it in terms of a power series and then um, differentiate or integrate that resulting power series, and it's much easier. Um, so the question becomes, well, for, uh, for a given function, can we represent it as a power series? And if so, uh, for what values of x will that power series converge? <clears throat> So uh, in this section, we're going to start talking about how we can determine um, a power series representation of a given function. And uh, <clears throat> when we first introduce this in section 6.2, we're going to make use of uh, the formula for the sum of a geometric series. Um, so let's recall briefly what the geometric series test says. So the geometric se series test says... Uh, if we are working with a geometric series, that is something of the form uh, of the sum from zero to infinity of a constant a times another constant r being raised to the nth power, uh, that series will converge if the absolute value of r is less than one. And if the absolute value of r is less than one, then the sum of that series is given by a over 1 minus r. Uh, now recall one thing uh, that I'll mention in this section again. Uh, that formula for the sum of a geometric series requires the series to be written in a way uh, such that the initial term corresponds to n equals 0. Um, so recall that for some geometric series, if they start at n equals 1 or n equals 2, uh, we might have to manipulate them initially to put them in this form. Um, now making use of what we know about the geometric series test, uh, let's suppose that we're considering a power series of the following form. Say the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a times x to the nth. So this is a power series centered at zero, and it looks exactly like a geometric series. In fact, for any fixed value of x, it is a geometric series. So using the geometric series test, we know that this series will converge as long as the absolute value of our ratio, in this case x, is less than one. Uh, and if that is true, then the sum of this series is given by a over 1 minus r, or in this case, a over 1 minus x. <clears throat> now, we know that that series will converge if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So solving that inequality for x, well, that means that x has to lie between positive and negative 1. So that means that our radius of convergence would be 1. This is a power series centered at zero, and we can move left or right of zero, one unit, and still have convergence. So our radius of convergence is one, and the interval of convergence would be from negative one to positive one. So we could test the endpoints here. You might ask, well, should we include positive or negative one? Uh, but recall uh, the geometric series test says that we have divergence if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. So we would not include our endpoints for that interval of convergence here. Um, so throughout this section, we're going to um, exploit that formula for the sum of a geometric series. Uh, if we're working with power series, 
uh, which we could think of um, in terms of a geometric series. So in our first example, uh, we have a problem to find the sum of the series from n equals zero to infinity of three x to the nth power uh, and determine the radius of convergence. So this series looks exactly like a geometric series. So let's maybe first rewrite it a little bit. So here are series from zero to infinity of three x to the nth power. We can maybe think about as being one times three x to the nth power. So this looks exactly like a geometric series from n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the nth. So in this example, a we could think of as one and r, our ratio of this series would be three x. So let's start by determining what are the values of x where this series would converge to some uh, fixed sum. So here we would say, by the geometric series test, uh, the series converges if the absolute value of our ratio r, which in this case is 3x, is less than 1. <clears throat> now, if we divide this inequality through by the constant 3, we find the absolute value of x has to be less than 1 third. So immediately, we find that our radius of convergence is one-third. So this was a power series centered at zero. <clears throat> if the absolute value of x is less than one-third, we have convergence. So our radius of convergence is one-third. Uh, now, if the absolute value of x is less than one-third, uh, the series converges to a sum, we were asked to find the sum of that series. So let's say the following. If the absolute value of x is less than one-third, then uh, the sum of our series is given by uh, the following. So we were working with the sum from zero to infinity of three x to the nth. Uh, in general, the sum of a geometric series is given by a over one minus r. In this example, a was one divided by one minus r, uh, which was three x. So as long as the value of x is less than uh, one third, an absolute value, then the series will be guaranteed to converge and its sum would be one over one minus three x. So depending on what the value of x is, uh, we may or may not have convergence and it will affect the value of the sum of our series. Um, so let's look at another one similar to this. Uh, in our next example, we are again asked to find the sum of the following series, the sum from zero to infinity of two x plus one times 27x cubed all raised to the nth uh, and the radius of convergence for that series. So again, this is very similar to a geometric series. Uh, we see that we have this term 27x cubed all being raised to the nth power. So we can think about that as say an r to the nth power for any fixed value of x. Uh, we have a constant which we could call r. And then this term out in front of it, 2x plus 1, well, it doesn't depend on n, so we could think about this as being a constant a. For any fixed value of x, 2x plus 1 is some constant, which we could denote as a. Um, so this series could be thought of as a geometric series for any fixed value of x. Uh, and we know by the geometric series test that this series converges if the absolute value of our ratio, <clears throat> 27x cubed, is less than 1. 
So if I were to divide, uh, divide this through by the constant 27, I have the absolute value of x cubed is less than 1 over 27. And if I take the cubed root of both sides of this equation, I have the absolute value of x uh, is less than 1 third. 27 is 3 cubed, uh, so taking the cubed root, we get 1 third. So immediately from this step, we find uh, our radius of convergence would be 1 third. So we've answered that part of the problem, uh, making use of the geometric series test. And we're also asked for the sum of this series. Now we know it converges if uh, the absolute value of x is less than 1 third, in which case the sum of our series is given by the following. So again, our series was from 0 to infinity of 2x plus 1 times 27x cubed to the nth. Uh, in general, the sum of a, ser a geometric series is a over 1 minus r. Uh, so here a was 2x plus 1. And we divide by 1 minus r. And in this example, r was 27x cubed. So as long as the absolute value of x is less than one third, this series will converge, uh, and the sum of that series would be given by 2x plus 1 over 1 minus 27x cubed. Um, so in these first two examples, uh, we're looking at determining the sum of a uh, geometric series, or the sum of a power series, if we can think about it in terms of a geometric series. Uh, so now, in the next examples uh, that we'll consider, we'll work in the opposite direction. Um, so we'll start trying to consider, can we represent a given function as a power series? And we can, uh, if, as long as we can think about that function as uh, having the form of the sum of a geometric series. So in this, section, uh, or in this next example, we'll consider the opposite direction. Uh, where we are asked to find a power series which represents a given function and then determine its radius and interval of convergence. Okay, so in this first example, we have the function f of x is x over 1 minus 5x. And this looks sort of similar to the sum of a geometric series. We could think about this as having the form a over 1 minus r. It looks very similar to that. And we know that this ratio, a over 1 minus r, is the sum of a geometric series, that is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a times r to the nth power, as long as the absolute value of r is less than 1. So we could express this quotient in terms of an infinite series as long as the absolute value of our ratio, r, is less than 1. Uh, so what that means for this problem is that the function f of x, which is x over 1 minus 5x, could be rewritten as the sum of, uh, uh, from n equals 0 to infinity of, a times r to the nth. So let's think about what a is here. So a is whatever we have for our numerator, in this example, x. So we would have x times our ratio to the nth power. So let's think about what our ratio is. Here our denominator was 1 minus r, so we had 1 minus 5x. So in this example, our ratio r would be 5x. We're taking that quantity raised to the nth power. Um, so we could leave our answer in this form, but we'll see uh, moving forward in this section and the next section uh, that we would probably want to simplify this a little bit uh, when we start uh, making use of applications of these power series representations of a function. Uh, it's, it's better to have them in simplified form. So what I could do here is the following. 
if I rewrite this, I have x times uh, my 5x to the nth power. We can think of as 5 to the nth times x to the nth. And then if I combine these two terms, my x to the first power and x to the nth power, I would have the sum from 0 to infinity of 5 to the n times x to the n plus 1 power. So this function f of x is equal to the following power series as long as this series converges. So let's recall what the conditions are for convergence. So here we needed the absolute value of the ratio r to be less than 1 in order for that series to converge. So this function f of x that we're working with can be expressed in terms of this power series if the absolute value of our ratio, which was 5x, is less than 1. Um, so solving this inequality for x, well, if I divide both sides through by 5, I have the absolute value of x is less than 1 fifth, uh, which means that x has to lie between positive and negative 1 fifth. So we end up finding here uh, that our interval of convergence would be from negative 1 fifth to positive 1 fifth. And our radius of convergence would be 1 fifth. So that was the second part of this problem, is represent our function as a power series and determine what are the values of x for which that is a valid representation. Okay, so let's look at some other ones. In our next example, part b, uh, we have f of x is 1 over 1 plus 4x squared. Uh, so this is sort of similar to the sum of a geometric series, a over 1 minus r, uh, the only difference here is that our denominator, instead of 1 minus some quantity, we have 1 plus 4x squared. Uh, but a sum of terms can be thought of in terms of a difference. I could think of this as uh, 1 over 1 minus a negative 4x squared. That would be the same as 1 over uh, 1 plus 4x squared. So this now has uh, the same form of the sum of a geometric series, a over 1 minus r. Uh, so in this example, our function f of x, uh, which was 1 over 1 plus 4x squared, we could represent as a power series if we think about the corresponding geometric series. That is the sum from 0 to infinity of a, which in this example is our numerator 1, so we would have a constant 1, times our ratio r, which in this example is a negative 4x squared. All raised to the nth power. So again, uh, we can represent this function in terms of that power series if the absolute value of our ratio, which was negative 4x squared, is less than 1. So again, uh, in this example, we could leave our power series in this form, uh, but we'll see later in this section that we would most likely want to simplify this expression a little bit. So one way that we could simplify here is by doing the following. If we use properties of exponentials, our negative 4x squared to the nth, uh, we could rewrite as negative 4 to the nth times x squared to the nth. And then my x squared to the nth power, making use of properties of exponentials, I could rewrite as x to the 2n power. So I would have negative 4 to the nth uh, times x to the 2n. Um, so this would be an alternating series 
depending on the value of x. So we've represented it as a power series. And we're, we were also asked to determine the interval and radius of convergence. So we've said we can only uh, make that power series representation of our function if the absolute value of our ratio is less than 1. Um, so manipulating this a little bit, well, the absolute value of negative 4x squared uh, would be 4 absolute value of x squared is less than 1. Uh, so dividing through by 4, uh, we would have the absolute value of x squared needs to be less than 1 fourth. And taking the square root of both sides, we find the absolute value of x needs to be less than uh, 1 half. Um, so that means that our interval of convergence for this power series is from negative 1 half to positive 1 half. And the radius of convergence would be 1 half. So for the given function f of x, we can represent it in terms of a power series, uh, the power series that we found here, uh, as long as the value of x lies in the interval from negative 1 half to positive 1 half. So let's look at some other examples. In part c, we have 1 over 3 plus 7x. So again, this is somewhat similar to the form of uh, the sum of a geometric series. Uh, in this example, some differences that we have uh, are we have 1 over, normally our series has a constant 1. In this case, we have a 3 for that lead term. And then minus r, here we have a plus 7x. Um, but let's see if we could rewrite this or manipulate this function uh, to think about it in terms of a geometric series or, or the sum of a geometric series. So one way that I could proceed here is I know I want that leading term in my denominator to be a 1. I need this to have the form a over 1 minus r. Uh, so in order to get a 1 for that lead coefficient in the denominator, I could think about factoring out a 3 from each term, which would leave me with 1 plus 7 thirds times x for my denominator. So it's a little bit closer to the form of a geometric series. Um, so here I could think about my numerator as being a one-third, and then my denominator is one plus seven-thirds x. So it's pretty close to the sum of a geometric series, uh, but again I need this summation to be thought of in terms of a difference, something of the form a over one minus some quantity. So in this example, just like our last example, our plus 7 thirds we can think of as subtraction of a negative 7 thirds x. So this now has the form of the sum of a geometric series. So this function f of x that we were given can be written as a geometric series, that is the sum from 0 to infinity, of a which is one-third, times our ratio, r, which is negative seven-thirds x, all raised to the nth power, as long as the absolute value of our ratio, uh, negative seven-thirds x, is less than one. So as with our previous examples, well, we could leave it in this form, uh, but it would be useful to uh, rewrite this series in a simplified form. So what we could do here is the following. We have the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 third uh, times, uh, if we distribute our factor of n using properties of exponentials, uh, we would have a negative 7 thirds to the nth times x to the nth, 
and then our ratio here, that negative 7 thirds to the nth power, uh, can be rewritten as a negative 7 to the nth power divided by 3 to the nth power. And again, times x to the nth. So now, in our denominator, we have a 3 times 3 to the nth. So if we were to combine those terms, we have the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 7 to the nth divided by 3 to the n plus 1 times x to the nth power. So we have a power series representation of our function, and we're, we're also asked to determine the interval and radius of convergence. So recall, this formula for the sum of a geometric series is only valid if the absolute value of our ratio is less than 1. So manipulating this inequality or solving for x, uh, well, the absolute value of negative 7 thirds x would be 7 thirds times the absolute value of x. We need that to be less than 1. So solving for x, we have the absolute value of x needs to be less than uh, 3 over 7. So dividing through by 7 thirds or multiplying both sides through by 3 sevenths, we have the following which means that our interval of convergence for this function or this power series is uh, from negative 3 sevenths to positive 3 sevenths, and the radius of convergence is 3 sevenths. So the given function can be represented as a power series as long as the value of x is between positive and negative 3 sevenths and its power series representation uh, would be given by the following. Okay, uh, so let's look at another one. Uh, in this next example, we have f of x is given by x over x plus 3. Um, so this one is a little trickier to think about in terms of the sum of a geometric series. Uh, we want to think about it in terms of a over 1 minus r. So let's think about what we could do to manipulate this. So our numerator, in this case x, is our a value. And our denominator we want to be of the form uh, 1 minus r. Uh, now currently it's written as x plus 3. Uh, so maybe in my first step I could just reverse the order of this summation. Let's think about it as 3 plus x. And I know that I want this lead coefficient for that constant in my denominator to be a 1. So as we did in our last example, let's factor out a 3 from that denominator, which would leave us with 1 plus x over 3. Uh, so we could think about this as a numerator of x over 3 divided by 1 plus x over 3, or that summation in our denominator we can think of as a difference, 1 minus negative x over 3. And now this has the form of a sum of a geometric series, a over 1 minus r. So this function that we were given, f of x, we can rewrite as a power series, that is the sum from 0 to infinity, of a, which was x over 3, uh, times r to the nth power. And r was negative x over 3. So taking that quantity to the nth power. And this is a valid power series representation as long as that series converges. That is, if the absolute value of our ratio, negative x over 3, is less than 1. So, if we were to simplify this series, uh, well, we have x over 3, and then we had a negative x over 3 to the nth. So that's the same as a uh, 
negative x to the nth power divided by 3 to the nth power. So simplifying a bit, we have the sum from 0 to infinity. Uh, this negative x to the nth term we can rewrite as negative 1 to the nth times x to the nth. Uh, and then we still have this factor of x to the first. So times x in our numerator. And in our denominator, we had a factor of 3 times 3 to the nth power. So grouping the like terms, we have the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth times x to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 power. So this would be a power series representation of that function uh, as long as that series converges. That is, if the absolute value of negative x over 3 is less than 1. Uh, now the absolute value of negative x over 3 is the same as the absolute value of x over 3. We need that to be less than 1. So if I multiply both sides through by 3, I find the absolute value of x has to be less than 3. Therefore, my interval of convergence, i, would be from negative 3 to positive 3. And my radius of convergence would be 3. All right, so we're seeing in the first part of the section 6.2 material that by exploiting uh, our formula for the sum of a geometric series, uh, we can represent certain types of functions, uh, mainly functions involving quotients, in terms of power series. And we can also determine uh, the interval and radius of convergence uh, to see where that power series representation of a function would be valid. Uh, now, in the next part of the section, we'll start discussing uh, how we could differentiate or integrate power series and see uh, how we can make use of differentiation or integration to rewrite certain functions in uh, a form of the sum of a geometric series.